assalamu alaikum dear student welcome back to the next lecture uh, in this lecture i will explain to you probability as a tool in genetics okay what's the probability it is the likelihood or the chance of a particular event to occur that is the probability so chance of an event to occur in simple words it is called the probability for example in cars there are 52 cars there are four different colors and each one of them they have 30 cards a k q j 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 and 2 so there are 13 in each so together there are 52 cards now the probability for each card to be displayed or to be taken by any of the individual it could be calculated and that is the likelihood of that event now it can tell us how the event occurs and how often it can occurs okay it occurs so the frequency of the event and how it can occur these two things we are calculated by the probability an example the rolling of six sided die so if you roll a die it has six sides and each side has written a number or dots one two three four five and six respectively now the probability or the chance that you will get six or you will get one that is the basically the probability of the occurrence of the event based on such sort of uh, probability laws or principles the empirical data is recorded and it is applied in different sciences as for example in weather the weather forecast based on the empirical data the surroundings its climate its temperature, its wind speed, wind velocity, and the direction of the wind, all these things and many more, they are calculated and based on that, we can predict whether it will be a dry or sunny day or whether it will be a rainy day or whether it will be a cloudy day. Now, uh, this uh, figure can explain more in detail the uh, probability. For example, six-sided die that is thrown by you and each one have one two three four five or six uh, uh, dots on it so it is it is uh, numbered in colored one two three four five six and the probability that you get any one of that number is one over six because six are the maximum sided and one one over six would be the probability similarly you toss a coin to start a match whether it's head or tail. So there are two possible events. Either it could be head or it could be tail. So probability for each one of them is the one over two. So basically the number of events or the one is divided by the number of events. That's the probability of that given event. Now probability can be used as a a tool in genetics just for example in case of cards I can explain to you this example in more detail so you can see there are four different colors heart then the uh, diamond then the uh, spade and club so there are four different colors and you can see that uh, each one of them they have the 13 cards now the probability that you get first card and it is the that of the um, either heart or the spade or the diamond or the club its probability is 13 over 52 52 because there are total number of cards are total possible events 52 and the probability that you get the card of the club 
uh, or the card of the spade for example in this case card of the spade is the 13 because there are 13 card for each color so 13 for the spade so probability that you get the, the first card that of the spade is 13 over 52 now you get the second card the probability that you get again this spade it is 12 over 51 because one is already drawn so remaining cards are 51 and out of them 12 are basically that of the spade now you get another spade card again the 11 over, 11 over 50 because the you have drawn two cards and remaining are 50 similarly you have drawn two cards of the uh, spade and remaining cards for the spade are 11 likewise it could be for the uh, cl cl uh, club so in case of club the next card we have 13 card because yet we haven't drawn any card of the club and the remaining cards are the 50 or you can get heart again 13 over 50 or you can get diamond again 30 over 50 so this is how we can calculate the so we, uh, we can calculate the probability and this is a uh, continue continue for all the remaining cards given in this figure now based on these things there are two rules of the uh, calculation of the uh, probability one is the multiplication rule the first rule that is basically probability of two or more independent events occurring together is calculated by multiplying their independent probability so one condition the most important is that in this uh, rule is that the each one of them they must be independent events so two event they are independent to each other for example you flip a coin one time and either you get head or tail this is one event and we flip it again and you get head or tail this is another so they are independent to each other so occurring of the head for the first time it won't affect the occurrence of the head on the second time or the occurring of the tail on the other, other side so that's why they are independent and when the two events are independent then their individual probabilities are multiplied to get the combined uh, probability. Similarly, rolling of a die, if you roll a die for one, side, one time and probability you get 6, it is 1 over 6. And if you again roll it and probability you will get 6, again 1 over 6. So giant probability that you rolled a die for 2 times and you get 6 each time, it would be 1 over 6 multiplied by 1 over 6. So when we can apply this uh, the uh, rule of the multiplication simply when there is a catchy words and so for example the statements like this the probability of getting six for a rolling a die first time and probability of getting a six for for rolling of a die second time so these two sentences and these two part of the sentence they are joined together by and so when there is and we will apply the rule of multiplication and the condition is that the, the the events whose probability is being calculated they must be independent of each other now for example we can explain here if you roll a fair die twice what is the probability that you will roll a six for both times so this is the question now you can see the multiplication rule it will apply uh, so these are two independent events the occurrence of six for first time it is not going to affect the occurrence of the six or getting out the six for second time so a and b the two events so mathematically it will be probability a a b it would be equal to probability a multiplied by probability b p a multiplied by p b well, in this case, the probability of getting 6 and 6 for both time, that would be equal to probability of getting 6 multiplied by probability of getting 6 for first and second time respectively. So, probability of getting 6 is 1 over 6. So, 1 over 6 multiplied by 1 over 6 is 1 over 
36. So that's the probability that two consecutive times you roll a die and you get 6. Now another rule is the addition rule. That is basically probability of any one of two or more mutually exclusive words is calculated by adding the probability of these events. So this is most important thing, mutually exclusive. In that case, the occurrence of one event that excludes the possibility of occurrence of the second event. So probability of throwing a dice once and rolling either a three or a four. So in same event, either you get three or you get four, this probability, this is called the uh, mutually exclusive because if you get three, you cannot get four. And if you get four, you cannot get three in that rolling. So that's why they are mutually exclusive. And here we use the words, the catches, either or. So when they are either and or used, that means one of that event is going to occur and they, those events are basically mutually exclusive. And when they are mutually exclusive, we apply the rule of addition. So when those probabilities being calculated must be mutually exclusive, meaning that one event excludes the probability of other occurring. So if the one event has occurred, the second is not going to happen. Now uh, we can explain with this uh, example. For example, if you roll a fair die once, what is the probability that you will roll either six or four? So you can. Uh, see in the blue text, either or, these two catchy words are there, that means it would be mutually exclusive and we are going to apply the rule of the addition. Now these are mutually exclusive, A and B, both of these events and probability A, B, it would be mathematically, it would be equal to probability or P, A plus probability or P, B. Now the, you get six or here is some typing mistake, 4, each of them, the probability for each event is 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 will be 2 over 6 and 1 over 3. So probability to go 1 over 3. In this way, you probably, some of all of these 6 probabilities, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, you will get 1. So you will get one of them, the probability is 100%. And you get one of, or two of them, either or, it would be 1 over 3. And you will get, for example, three odd numbers, one of them, whether it's one or three or five. So the probability will be one over two, that will be have. So this is how mutually exclusive are uh, added. Okay, the application of these uh, probability in genetic crosses, we will cover it in the next lecture. So, uh, or we can. Now we can continue with this lecture. The application of the probability of genetic cross. For example, in this case, the male or female, they are crossed, and both of them, they are heterozygotes for A gene. So when they are heterozygotes, so when they are heterozygotes, in that case, the one over to chance of getting a getting from father these two one of these alleles either it's get capital A or small a. its probability is one over two similarly either it gets capital A or small a from the mother this probability is one over two so now as these two events they are mutually independent because if the father is giving capital A it is not going to affect whether the mother is going to give capital A or small a so they are mutually independent. So when they are mutually independent, the combined probability, it will be calculated with the help of the uh, multiplication rule. So father is going to give a capital A and mother is also going to capital A and the genotype is going to a capital A, capital A. The probability for that would be one, one over two multiplied by one over two. So that is one over four. So uh, this is uh, true for all of these four different genotypes and probability for each of that genotype it would be 1 over, one over 4. Now that was the rule of the uh, you can say multiplication Now, where we can apply the rule of the uh, addition in the genetic process. 
carrying on that previous example now we have the you can see the probability for e charge we have the 1 over 4 either we get um, homozygous dominant or heterozygous two individuals each or each one of them they would have a probability of 1 over 4 and we get homozygous recessive again the probability is 1 over 4 so uh, we want to get the phenotype in this case for example if it is the case of the complete dominance then where there is a dominant allele it would have the same phenotype so the probability that we will get dominant expression for example purple plant we have already studied that example for example the purple plant and for that if you are crossing two heterozygous plots then you are going to get the uh, purple color the probability of combined probability it would be calculated by the rule of the addition because here these events are mutually exclusive if an individual is going to get capital A capital A the probability that it will get heterozygous is zero similarly if it is, it is going to get the heterozygosity the probability that it will get the homozygous dominant is zero so we add all these probabilities and the answer is the 3 over 4 here you can see the answer is 3 over 4 so 3 over 4 the probability that you will get the dominant expression in the offspring. So this is how we can apply the uh, rule of the addition in genetic crosses. Now, question is why we uh, bother about the probability rules and its calculation, why they are important in our life or they are important in genetics. And if they are important in genetics, definitely they are important for our lives. We will study this question. I will try to explain the answer of this uh, question in the next lecture. Until then, thank you very much. Stay home and stay safe. And please go through these lectures on the YouTube. Thank you.